Hello and welcome to this episode of Bale's Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about Born Harbour Cycles. That sits on paper one of your AQA exams and it's the specification 1.8 thermodynamics. If you want to find more of our thermodynamics videos, make sure you check out our playlist at the top and if you're enjoying this video, please hit the thumbs up. So a reminder from the last episode, then we talked about lattice enthalpy. The lattice enthalpy is the enthalpy change when one mole of a solid ionic compound is formed from gaseous ions. And that bit is really key for us today. These born harbor cycles are often used to find out the lattice enthalpy. So we can't measure that lattice enthalpy directly in the lab. We can sort of come to a calculation by compiling lots of other experimental data. And uh, we use the process very similar to a Hess cycle to determine that. That is actually called a born harbor cycle. And we're going to take a look at those in more detail today. So when it comes to determining the lattice enthalpy, we're going to have to think about that definition again, and it's forming it from a gaseous ion. So we need to be able to take the journey all the way from the elements that we start with and turn them all the way through into gaseous ions. This is kind of four simple steps. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this elements and we're going to turn them into gaseous atoms. You might remember this is the enthalpy of atomization from the definitions episode we looked at uh, last lesson. So then we've got the gaseous atoms. We're going to turn them into uh, ions. So the metal atoms are going to lose electrons to form positive ions and the non-metal atoms are going to gain electrons to form negative ions. Once we've got those gaseous ions we can now turn them into an ionic lattice. That's the lattice enthalpy which we're trying to determine through this whole process. So when it comes to talking about a born harbor cycle then what we need to do is we need to put those four steps into a big cycle that represents something a little bit like a Hess cycle but with a lot more detail in there. So we'll sketch out a simple one now. We'll start at our starting point here with a sodium solid and a half Cl2 gas. Remember, we're going to use a half Cl2 gas here because a lattice enthalpy is only trying to make one mole of the lattice. So if we're looking at NaCl, we only want to come out with one mole of sodium chloride. So the first thing we're going to do there is we're going to atomize that chlorine. We're going to take that half Cl2 gas and we're going to turn it into a Cl gas. So that's an atom of chlorine all on its own in the gaseous state. And then the next step we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing now, but to sodium we're going to turn that sodium solid into a sodium gas so we've atomized that and then we're going to start adding an electron so we'll do the first ionization energy for sodium and we'll turn that sodium gas now into a sodium ion still in the gaseous state the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add an electron to the chlorine that's electron affinity so we're going to add that electron to the chlorine and we're going to move on to the final step there which will be the lattice formation of sodium chloride because we've got those gaseous ions and we can push them together now, to complete the whole Born Harbor cycle, there's the enthalpy of formation for sodium chloride, which you're going to just put up on the left hand side here. And that's where we're just going to take the atoms of sodium and chlorine and we're going to combine them together in a formation reaction to make sodium chloride. So that's a really simple sketch of a Born Harbor cycle, but we need to add a lot more information in there, to A, to show people what we're doing, and also for us to be able to carry out the calculation. So we're going to start off here with the reactants, the chemicals that we're starting in the step. We're then going to add in the enthalpy change associated with that step. That's the amount of energy required to make that step happen. We're then going to give the step a title. So it's very clear to anybody looking at any examiner looking at it, what we're actually doing in this step. And the last thing on top of the next line, we're going to put the final products. Now this next line will form the bottom line for the next step. And therefore this will be the starting chemicals for that step. So here we go. We've got that sketch now filled in with loads more information and we can start to think about how we might go about calculating the lattice formation for sodium chloride. Well, to do that, we're going to go on a bit of a journey. We're going to start here where that green arrow is and we're going to work our way all the way back round to finish up down here where that pink arrow is appearing. So we're going to go in an anti-clockwise direction. So to do that, we're going to start off by going backwards against our first electron affinity of chlorine. So when we write that down in the equation, I'm going to do minus uh, the electron affinity of chlorine. OK, and then I'm going to go look at the next step, and that's the ionization energy of sodium. And I'm going backwards against that. So I'm going to do minus the electron affinity of sodium. And then I'm going backwards against the atomization energy of sodium and I'm going to do minus uh, H at to so the atomization energy of sodium there. And I'm also going backwards against the atomization of chlorine. So I'm going to do minus atomization of chlorine in the equation there. And then the next step is I'm going with the formation of NaCl. So I'm going to do plus uh, the delta H F of NaCl. And that gets me back to the beginning. And that's the full equation that I need to work on now to be able to work out the enthalpy of lattice formation for NaCl, which is that missing step that we have there on the right. 
So I put all the numbers in then. Now you'll notice I've put all the uh, expressions, all the enthalpy changes in brackets. So I'll start off with minus and then minus 349. That's really, really important to get the right answer. And that's giving me an answer of minus 788 kilojoules per mole. So you might well have noticed that whenever we put a diatomic molecule in there, such as chlorine, Cl2, we always put a half in front of it. And that's because the enthalpy of atomization is to produce one mole of gaseous atoms. So the value that we have is usually just to make one mole of the gaseous atoms at the end. So we always put a half in front of that molecule. So you remember from the definitions episode, we talked about the first electron affinity and the second electron affinity. The first electron affinity is an exothermic process as we add an electron to an atom to form a negatively charged ion. The second electron affinity is actually an endothermic process. And this is because we're taking a negative electron and we're pushing it towards an already negatively charged ion. And there's some repulsion there. So we have to put more energy in. So this is an endothermic process. This means that our born harbor cycle now looks a little bit different because after we've got our first electron affinity, where we've gone down because it's an exothermic process and energy is being released from the system, we then have a next step, which is an endothermic, which takes the energy back up of the system. So we have this kind of weird roller coaster where we've gone up, we come down for the first electron affinity, and then we go back up for the second electron affinity before dropping all the way back down with our lattice formation. A born harbor cycle takes all experimental data and combines it together to work out a value for lattice enthalpy. Now, it is possible to work this out theoretically, but there is a difference to the values. And this is because a theoretical value assumes that all the ions are perfectly spherical and form purely ionic bonds. This isn't the case. There's often some covalent character within the bonding between these two ions. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the thumbs up below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on any lessons coming out on thermodynamics over the next couple of days. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch and have a great day.